Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the IWN September webinar. Today, we have a presentation from Remote Assist Technologies. The focus this morning will be on a device called the HMT-1, a high-resolution head-mounted display that allows operators to work hands-free while being able to access video calls, documents, mobile forms, and the like. To take us through this technology, we have the crack team from Realware, Steve Humphreys and Kim Stevens. Steve is the in-country manager for Realware across Australia and New Zealand. He has been working in the water industry, or with the water industry, I should say, for 15 years, focusing on governance, risk, compliance, and HSC management systems and mobile technology solutions. Joining him is Cam. Cam is Solutions Engineer, Realware Australia, New Zealand, a qualified health and safety professional with 15 years experience working in high risk industries with a focus on deploying technology to step change health and safety outcomes. And by the by, Steve also, uh, sorry, Cam uh, also spent two years at Watercorp for his sins. Also joining us today is Brock Tunnicliffe, IWN Program Lead for Edge Technologies. Brock will go into detail on the use case and trial underway, currently underway at City West Water. As per usual, to make it, this all run smoothly, could I please ask that you switch off your video and also your audio. And if you've got any questions, just direct them in the chat function and then I can guide and modulate that discussion. And once the presentation's finished, we're really hoping to get some good, I guess, ideas and discussion going. The presentation will go for about 30 minutes. It's also being recorded. So if any of your colleagues aren't able to drop into the session this morning, um, let them know that it's gonna be uploaded, hopefully later today, but definitely by tomorrow. So thanks for joining us, everyone. And thanks for uh, Cam and Steve and Brock for making this presentation possible. At this point, I'll hand over to the team at Realware. So Steve, in your hands. Thanks a lot, Michael. Much appreciated. Uh, and thank you very much for the opportunity, uh, IWN, to uh, allow us to present to your members. Um, just got an agenda up here just to quickly go through what we want to cover in the rest of the session before we get to the Q&A part at the end. Uh, we'll start by just explaining uh, this technology, you know, how it is practical, how it's appropriate for deployment immediately, as opposed to perhaps other wearable solutions that you've explored. And then I'm going to hand over to my uh, to Cameron, uh, who will be able to present the technology and actually show you what he can see on the device before we then hand over to Brock for the uh, case study. But yeah, at, at the beginning, it is good just to understand exactly what we're talking about when we talk about this particular format of wearable technology. Uh, I should also point out, I, I didn't mention it at the start just then, but uh, Microsoft Teams is supporting Realware in this initiative uh, with IWN. And at the conclusion of the demonstration, uh, uh, maybe we're going to bring up some more information about how you can get access to validating the technology with Microsoft Teams supported by IWN. Okay, so Realware is a US company. We are also supported with uh, representatives in Melbourne, uh, Australia and Perth and we manufacture the HMT or head mounted tablet as you can see here. This is an intrinsically safe rugged wearable solution that is designed to allow you to have access to using a wearable in situation in the field. It's designed for industrial operations uh, to be worn uh, in a practical manner that is not overly immersive or too distracting. So we, we, we position this device as a, as a mobile device and we, we see it as that next iteration of mobile device, which is the wearable that moves beyond the handheld device. And when we talk about that, it's worth looking at a few bullet points. I'm actually going to put one on my head at the same time. Hopefully it doesn't get too distracted by the background, the rather extreme background that I've got running at the same time. But if I wear one, it's just easier to explain the concept. So the head mounted tablet, when I set it up correctly, I have a monocule under my right eye which effectively creates a seven inch screen sitting at arm's length in front of my face below line of sight. Hard to imagine, uh, but that, that's the case. Uh, the, the monocule is uh, obviously a lot smaller than seven inches, but when I glance down into that, it's the equivalent of a seven inch flat screen sitting out in front of my face below line of sight. I then have a 16 megapixel camera on the right hand side or the left hand side, depending on how you mount the device. It works for both left and right eye dominant operators. And with this correctly set up, I also have a noise cancellation bubble two feet in front of my face, meaning that anybody that dials in to see what I see through the camera will be able to hear me in up to 100 decibels of sound very clearly. 
which again sets it apart from trying to you know put a screen next to you and talk to it whilst you're talking about something. Uh, it makes it far more convenient or ergonomically correct, in fact. So just some other factors that are listed here. The device is unobtrusive, comparative to say a stereoscopic uh, lens solution, which typically covers half your face. And you might be familiar with those kind of solutions as well. Perhaps you've explored them. You know, the, the, the well-known solutions include Google Glass or HoloLens or other ones. And those, those stereoscopic solutions are fantastic for training someone to go into situation and also for working indoors in safe environments where you don't necessarily have to have your wits about you. But as soon as you go into an industrial setting, especially if you're outside uh, in direct sunlight, then the, the HMT is designed specifically for that purpose. Other important factors, it's completely compatible with PPE. So you can see I've got it mounted with a, a hard hat here, but it will it'll operate with your safety glasses, with your dust mask, and by, uh, with your ear protection if you place that over the top. Other factors, the, the device weighs about 350 grams. Uh, the battery will last for eight to 10 hours and the monocule I can, I can flip out of the way if I don't need it and still have the device operating with the camera running. Uh, the display does work in direct sunlight. The device is IP66 rated, which leaves it waterproof and able to be fully submerged in water or used in the rain. Uh, and by that same token, it's therefore dust tight. Uh, it's drop proof on concrete from two meters. And it, 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 you really should think of it as an Android tablet class uh, powered process, uh, ta tablet, an Android tablet, uh, that runs a, a Snapdragon processor. So that's the, that's the technology in a nutshell. Uh, and really what we want you to take away from this is whilst it is wearable technology, it, it is a rugged tablet. Other really important factors include the device connects via Wi-Fi, or you can hotspot it to a mobile phone. And in fact, there's a third option there. You can set up a modem on the side of the device which can be plugged in and allows you to run uh, a SIM card of your choice. So plenty of options for, for creating connectivity. That's not to mention that the device also works offline if you, there are offline use cases as Cameron is about to demonstrate. And in that case, the device has 260 gigabyte of storage capacity. And then finally, it's Bluetooth enabled and GPS enabled. So depending on what you're using this device for, you, there's a, you can leverage that capability perhaps to locate the device operator or to interact with Bluetooth, devi Bluetooth devices on the edge, uh, other use cases. Okay, I, I did mention Microsoft and I think it's, it's a really important component of what we're doing at Realware. You know, the HMT is the largest selling wearable device for using in industrial situations in the world. We, we've sold about 30,000 of them to date and they've been deployed with some some very well-known household name brands around the world in a number of different verticals. But most recently, we, we received some support uh, from Microsoft who are bringing out Teams uh, on, uh, you know, with, with a first line in, uh, worker initiative. And so they're focusing on the deployment of Teams in the industrial setting. And with that in mind, we had the CEO of Microsoft present uh, just recently at Microsoft Inspire. I'm just gonna run that video now. Finally, we are innovating to support the more than 2 billion first-line workers around the world who during this pandemic have been critical, including so many who are contributing to all the essential roles to keeping our society and economy functioning throughout. Workers at Honeywell Factory in Houston, Texas, for example, are using Teams embedded in a wearable computer from our partner Realware to live stream what they see to remote colleagues and experts while having hands-free conversations. This has allowed them to continue production and complete critical factory testing, keeping engineers around the world engaged to ensure everything is built properly. And they can sign off on certifications directly within Teams. Okay, so what I now want to do is hand over to Cameron to, to demonstrate the most common use cases for the device. Uh, and many of those do involve using Teams and, and, and Brock's case study after that will also show you exactly how they have deployed Teams with Realware. The typical use cases are shown in this slide here for, for getting going with the technology. And I, I think the most important takeaway is simplicity and practicality. You know, this device can be enabled very quickly uh, and it can immediately start 
producing uh, productivity improvements, as I hope you can understand when Cameron starts showing uh, some of these use cases. Cam, can I hand over to you? Yes, Steve, no problem. I'll just uh, hand over the share screen. Okay, hopefully you guys can see my screen there with uh, my programs, my yeah. camera. Yeah, perfect. So uh, I'm currently at the end of my driveway, uh, which I'll show you in just a second. I'm just gonna open up the camera and show you where I am. My camera. My camera. Okay, so I'm at my water meter and uh, got my gloves on, being safe. And you should be able to see my feed live there. Uh, and my, my water meter with all of the crawlies that go along with it. Zoom level five. Take photo. Take photo. Preview. Preview. Manage tags. Water meter. Compliant. Apply tags. Zoom level three. So what I've just done there is taken a photo using my voice and then I've added some metadata tags. Zoom level one. And uh, that photo can now be workflowed uh, through my enterprise resource planning tool or I can sync it to OneDrive and have it uploaded and passed through uh, from there. Navigate back. If I wanted to um, record a video of this particular location to have on file as to you know my, my current address and whether there are any hazards around here, dogs, for example, and have that on the system, Zoom level one, I can do that by simply saying record video. I'm currently at 11 Helena Street in Guildford, Western Australia, and uh, here's the water meter here. Uh, it seems to be uh, set up in a fairly compliant manner, um, no real hazards around the area. Stop recording, preview. So I can play that video back and that video is now available um, to be used in any capacity that I need to. Video stop. So we're often using um, the onboard video uh, capability to record uh, training tasks, uh, which can be used uh, for commissioning or for new workers to be uh, introdu introduced to new tasks, or we could put it on as an induction video, uh, and you can put that back on the, on the device. Navigate home. So then I'll show you the file storage uh, capability, my files. So here I've just included a couple of files that are water related. So water meter drawing. Obviously uh, City West Water diagram here about installing a residential water meter. Uh, and the issue there is obviously you're probably not going to be able to see any of that detail. So I can just zoom through the, uh, the, the, the drawing here using the zoom function and then moving my head. So there's an onboard gyroscope. So when I move my head left and right through the diagram, there's a purple rectangle under the water meter drawing um, file name. And when I zoom into the different levels that uh, purple rectangle will come smaller and show you where I am on the drawing. Zoom level three. And you can see that where I am on the, on the diagram. I can freeze window. At that point, I can um, effectively um, maneuver my head, move the boom arm out the way, continue to perform the task, control window, and then move back and go to the next phase. Oh, uh, there's a, a dog just uh, <laughs> running past me and just came to lick me. Uh, there, there you go, live, live from the field. Zoom level one, navigate back. And then documents can be viewed as well. The plane flying overhead. It's uh, all, all happening out in the field. Water commissioning. Well, actually Cam, that's a great example of the noise cancellation. We can barely hear that plane. Righto, that's great. <laughs> Good. Um, hopefully you can you can hear me though nice and clear. Perfectly. Okay, go to page nine. Zoom level three. 
So this is a multi-page PDF document and I'm able to look through at the different things I need to see on that, doc uh, on that document. Again, I can freeze the window at any time to pause or I can navigate through to different pages. Go to page 18, zoom level four. window. So if you can cast your mind to the types of uh, use cases you'd use here, so checklist style maintenance, safety related inspections, um, installation guides, commissioning checklists, those types of use cases, uh, safety operations, maintenance, anywhere in the water life cycle, um, wastewater, water, doesn't really matter where you're, um, you're using the device, it's able to be transferred. It's a knowledge transfer platform, so we're transferring knowledge from person to person, uh, or from um, you know, HMT wearer to HMT wearer or from plant to person wearing the, the HMT as well. So I'll show you how we can get access to information uh, from a plant, scanning QR codes, a couple of uh, checklist type workflows, navigate home. So because this is just an Android tablet, I've shown you the onboard capability, the camera and the files requires no connectivity. But if I want to then start um, doing workflows. Again, no connectivity required unless I want to have a live feed back to an expert on the other end of the call, or if I want to sync that information up to the internet and then workflow that through my existing systems. My programs, SNAP support, uh, navigate back. I'll just show you now um, how I could scan a QR code in front of an asset. I've basically just got a forklift set, series of documentation set up here, just as an example. Scan QR code. So if I had a QR code, if, if I had a QR code and I was standing in front of a, a forklift right now, here's the QR code on that forklift. I'll scan that and it'll bring up the information associated with that asset. In this case, some checklist documents and even some IoT data from the sensors on board the, uh, the forklift. Again, you could have a smart water meter or something that you could view and any of that data could be viewed live. Documents. Operator manual. Go to page 12. Zoom level three. I can have a look through the manual. Navigate back. Navigate back. Checklists. Or I could perform a checklist, in this case a pre-start. Forklift pre-start inspection. Next step. Yes. Next step. No. Next step. Take photo. Again, I'm in front of my water meter here. Take photo. And what, what's happening here is I'm, as I'm populating the checklist and populating it with evidence, at the end of this workflow, I'll have a pre-populated PDF document that will include all of the answers to my questions and the evidence. The evidence could be scanning data. It could be recording audio, a conversation that I've had. It could be uh, vibration audio recording from a machine. It could be uh, obviously photos and videos. So any of that ev evidence would be uploaded and then able to be workflowed from the cloud layer. Navigate home. So, that's probably uh, a, a pretty simple snapshot of, um, of the types of things that you can do uh, on the real HMT. And obviously the most common use case is the one uh, which we're sort of doing now, but um, ultimately would be, yeah, as we talked about with Microsoft Teams, um, is having those live calls. I'll quickly show you the interface for that and then I'll pop back to, um, to progress with the webinar. My programs, Teams. So in this case, this is simply the same as you would if you were having a call at your computer with your Microsoft Teams, but we're now doing it when we're out in the middle of the plant. So I could call Steve, you can see there, I could call him right now and, um, and he would see my live feed and talk to me on the other end, my meetings. And if this webinar right now was not on, was on Microsoft Teams rather than Zoom, I would be able to dial in and you'd see my feed. Navigate home. So that's basically, um, the Realware HMT in a nutshell. Uh, there's a whole lot of other capability that we can show you if anybody wants a, a, you know, a, a, an introduction for a more detailed introduction of the, uh, the, the Realware HMT and how it can be used. So I'll pass you back to um, Steve, Michael and Brock and uh, thanks very much. 
Thanks, Cam. Really good demo from the field there. Well done. And a dog uh, chasing you as well. So, uh, Brock, over to yourself. No problem. All right, so I'm just going to share my screen. Okay, is that up? Yeah, that's up. Yep. Cool. All right. Um, so, yeah, first of all, I'm Brock Tunnicliffe from City West Water, um, the program lead for IWN's Edge Technologies um, uh, program group. Uh, through that, that program, we look at um, new and emerging technologies and see how they can be applied to solve uh, water industry problems. Now, um, some of the things we're looking at are drones, ROVs, um, particularly around condition monitoring, VR and AR. Um, for training, remote assistance, uh, 3D printing, and um, many more. So um, we've we've talked a bit about AR today, um, but we um, I've got a bit of a definition around what what AR actually is. So I'm going to show you some headsets um, that um, essentially AR technologies. This is the Magic Leap, uh, the Dacry Smart Helmet, the Realwear HMT1, the Microsoft Hololens. Um, this is using uh, AR pass through on, on a tablet, handheld tablet, and um, hopefully one day we'll get uh, AR contact lenses. Now, AR augmented reality is the practice of um, overlaying digital information onto the user's vision um, to provide a, um, I guess, an augmented reality, uh, putting it an added value layer onto our vision. Now, as um, Steve mentioned earlier, there's, there's a number of different types of AR technologies using. Yeah, cameras on tablets, a uh, full binocular style um, head mounted display, or in the case of Google Glass or HMT1, a, uh, essentially a floating screen in your vision uh, that you can use to, um, to visualize and communicate in real time. So some of the applications of this technology um, are remote assist, uh, digital workflows, uh, visualization of, of IoT uh, sensor uh, sensors, and uh, further industry 4.0 uh, applications. But um, brings me back to what we are using the headset for. Uh, so there is a bit of a need um, to prove subject, matters ability, uh, subject matter experts' ability to provide support to on-site staff. Um, support's current, or previously was given through site visits, which could cause um, delays due to travel time. Uh, they that if a site visit wasn't feasible, subject matter experts um, can provide uh, a phone call, um, which is a bit clunky at times. Uh, it was a particular pain point for um, our maintenance services and control systems uh, team leader, as uh, he was managing staff and subcontractors at pump stations and treatment plants, um, which can at time require uh, really specialist support. So the existing methods at the time um, were, were not really meeting uh, requirements. And then uh, obviously everyone knows what's happened this year. Um, March um, hit and we were uh, pretty impacted in the way that we could uh, move around the business. We had um, staff in treatment plants that, that couldn't really attend other sites um, because of cross-pollination and such. So we had to sort of overcome these working from home conditions. Uh, I'd been looking at this technology since September last year, speaking with um, with RealWeb, uh, with Steve, working on a on a business case to to roll out this technology into the treatment plants. But um, COVID happened, uh, and we had a bit of a uh, pivot. We had um, some stormwater commissioning works, uh, which is pictured uh, in the. The, the, the guy pointing at a pump, a pump station, a control cabinet, sorry. Um, he, he was actually a project manager on, uh, on a completely different project. He used to work on stormwater years ago, um, but he's uh, very much uh, not across it anymore. But uh, we curated out a headset. Uh, and within, uh, within about a month turnaround from planning to execution, uh, we had uh, Aaron, the person in the red, uh, the orange top there, uh, attend site and, uh, and do the stormwater commissioning. And we used MS Teams to get uh, access to that. We had to uh, apply uh, through Microsoft and Realware um, with our uh, Microsoft account exec to get accepted into that. Uh, we, we installed Teams and ran a meeting for the commissioning and Aaron was on site. Uh, we had engineers, treatment plants, project managers working from home and um, 
and there was about 10 or 15 different people from the business that dropped in through different times of the day to do things like share skater screens to Aaron's vision. So he could see the, the skater te telemetry data in real time in front of the HMI on the control cabinet. So really uh, real time feedback there. But then he also had all the, the subject matter experts and project managers guiding him through every step of the way. Any question he had, he could point to something and he'd have someone in his head tell him exactly what that is. So very, very valuable for him. Um, we've also used it for some recent uh, data logging out at an aqua for storage and recovery site in West Werribee. Now that, um, that was normally looked after by an engineer that, that um, is currently in Colombia and has no way back. Uh, there's some technicalities around getting the information off the, um, the, the data probes. So I attended site not knowing what I was doing with one of these headsets and I dialed into Javier who was in Colombia at the time. It was a little bit late at night, but he, um, he guided me through exactly what to do. I was, I was again pointing and asking questions and he guided me through every step of that process to be able to perform that um, efficiently uh, and safely and, um, and to, a, to a high standard. If I was out there by myself without that real time support, that would not have gone down half as well. Uh, and with that, I'm going to chuck a quick, uh, I'm going to hand over and chuck a quick video on about the stormwater commissioning work. So you'll hear from uh, a few of my colleagues who are involved in the project. And with that, I will stop sharing my screen. And Steve, could you please share that YouTube video? the opportunity for us to share our innovation moment with you. What you're going to see is a demonstration of augmented reality technology being utilised at a recent stormwater harvesting site commissioning. You'll see it demonstrated live in the field and also get an idea of how we see it being used into the future. Here's a quick recap on what the difference between VR and AR is. Virtual reality is the practice of putting yourself fully into an immersive digital environment whereas augmented reality is the practice of overlaying digital content into the user's vision. Looking at several augmented reality solutions, we had decided on either using the Microsoft HoloLens 2 or the RealWare HMT1. Both have their use cases and their pros and cons. In this case, we've selected the RealWare HMT1 because it is a rugged, field-ready device with a long battery life suitable for operations out in the field. You can see I'm wearing one now. Due to the impacts caused by COVID-19, Microsoft have been working with RealWare to integrate Microsoft Teams into the RealWare HMT1 headset. This option was only available for those with high value COVID-19 use cases. Through our account executive, Jen Ribeiro, we were able to get accepted into this program to trial MS Teams on the RealWare HMT1 headset that I'm wearing now. Hey everyone. Just a bit of an after action report on using the AI headset for the stormwater commissioning. Wow, that technology is great. It made it so easy to talk to everyone online. Basically it looks like a Microsoft Teams call from what I'm looking at and frees up my hands to do what I need to do on site. If I didn't have the headset, I think I'd be having to hold two phones for different conversations and have a laptop on the side looking at my SCADA screen. But all that came up on the headset and that, that was great. The headset itself, it's really light. It only weighs probably the same amount as a uh, hard hat wood um, it was very easy to use and as I said it frees up my hands and so I could see everything that I would usually be able to see in the office and made it a lot easier and quicker for everyone else to do that part if you're in like this is time sorry to interrupt you can share your screen if you want and then and then um, Aaron can see your screen if it's different oh yeah okay do you know that Aaron can see my screen I need to just zoom in a little bit. Uh, I can see all the figures. So you've got two valves. So you see two that two valve? valves? Yeah. All right, valve. So there's, yes, there should be two potable valves, but there should also be a non-potable valve. And I'm thinking it's on the far right-hand side of your screen. Usually there will be minimum four subject matter experts to attend sign for the commissioning like this. Um, one for operation, one for maintenance, one from safety team and a project manager. The AR technology has helped to close the gap between on-site commissioning officer and engineering support from the office. 
the live stream video that say health took to provide a clear vision of all assets and stop one side, which helped me to identify any potential defect from a safety, operation, and maintenance point of view. It definitely has helped us to complete all testing scenario quicker and with great confidence. Can you go back to the the, the, the cabinet before and look down at the conduit? Yeah. Look down in the orange conduit. Are those sealed with the expandable form? Those need to be sealed. If oh, it's not are they sealed? Yeah. Oh. I don't think so. Doesn't look like it. Yeah. So put on the note there, they need to seal it. All right. Oh, uh, that so uh, that was my video. Um, that's that's um about it for me. I can um we if we get a moment share a screen where I can go through that. But I think everyone might have seen how MS Teams is working with the headset for that video. Um, are we happy to uh, move over to question time? We'll open up discussion. Yeah, happy to do that, Brock. And um, I just I guess I'd just open up as well that if people want to direct their questions, we've still got about um. 60 online at the moment so if you direct those questions in the chat function and then brock steve cam feel free to jump in and answer mm -hmm. if the numbers drop down we can open up to it just a full conversation but yeah the chat function is probably the the best place to place to go at this stage yeah excellent yeah so if i'm no one's sharing screen i might give this a whirl uh there's a lot of working parts to this so if you Give me if this goes a bit as you're doing it, Brock, One of the things yep. that we were talking about in the lead up to this um, webinar was the concept of what are the use cases out there that people want to, I guess, you know, would like to to see. Where's it? Where could it be applied uh, within the water sector? Uh, I know, indeed, some of the uh, private conversations I was having on the chat function there was around incident control would be a good one. Uh, incident management, this sort of thing. Even water meter um, readers is actually. You were having a bit of a sort of, you know, one of the points was around, you know, dogs uh, coming up to water meter readers. And you see, I guess, maybe it's not perhaps directly relevant for this particular technology, but you see the increasing use of videos by police, military, um, I guess any of those frontline operators that have to, to use similar tools. So if anyone's got any, I guess, ideas on where the use cases would be, welcome to have that conversation as well. Yeah, something um, that I've put a lot of thought into. Um, essentially, with this trial, one of the big things for me was not over-promising um, features, uh, to not talk it up initially. So keep the um, initial scope of the trial uh, limited to something that was easily deliverable. And in this case, it's remote assistance. Uh, remote assistance has a whole bunch of um, applications from, from what we've shown today, but also things like safety walks, site tours, incident response. You can think, um, you know, have an incident team, might be a, a major burst. Um, you have a, uh, you have maintenance contractors on site. You can have the incident team in the office or in their bedrooms for all that matters. And they could have that direct visual feedback from a person on the ground, uh, boots on the ground, uh, guiding guiding that incident. Um, so something like uh, we probably haven't really experienced before, uh, been involved in incidents in the past and um, I just think what sort of impacts a technology like this could have on those, um, those events. And uh, I think um, there's some really big success uh, stories there. But then some of the further applications for, for uh, the technology are around say, um, yeah, automatic um, detection of, of text or patterns or what have you for say um, easy meter reading to feed uh, data back from a photo into um, into the billing system would be uh, potentially a, a good um, gateway between now and digital metering. Um, there's been yeah, as I, I sort of mentioned at the start, um, there was a big increase in um, estimated reads recently due to uh, the access issues and um, just uh, uh, the, the restrictions uh, that, that go around with, uh, with the current times. I've just, just got a couple of questions coming in if yeah. I could. Oh yeah, sorry. Um, I'm, I'm just rambling. One question from Murray Davison is on what's the nature of the back end platform for building forms and questionnaires uh, that the, the ones that were shown at the start. 
And is there any way to use third party online form systems, this system to allow control through voice and head movement? Steve, I don't know if that's one more for yourself or Brock. Yep, I'll jump in on that one. So, um, you know, you should think of it as an Android tablet, uh, a blank slate, and obviously Microsoft Teams uh, is a fantastic solution for um, remote supports uh, use cases. When you want to version out from there into workflow, there is a number of applications that have been optimised to run on the HMT. In fact, there's about over 200 now in the ecosystem that are available. Many of them are off-the-shelf products that are configurable and able to be integrated with your enterprise layers. So if you've got, if you're running Maximo or SAP or any kind of EHS system, there's uh, work, there's actual APIs to integrate and bring the workflows down and eventually onto the device. So that these workflows, they could be inspections, they could be work orders, they could be complex task processes. They can be scheduled and then sent to the HMT to be completed. And then that person can complete the workflow offline uh, with the support of content, whether it be documentation or videos that they watch in situation as they go through the steps to support them. And they bring somebody in on a call if they need them to, to get further support. Yeah, great, thanks, Steve. Just uh, one of the, before uh, I guess we wrap up, and there's a few more questions we want to get to, but I think it worth, might be worthwhile just touching on the next stage of the IWN trial uh, in this space. So, uh, Dean Barnett, I'm not sure if you're there uh, or Brock. If you want to just give it, I guess, a, a brief, I guess, a heads up on on what the potential opportunities for trial in this space with IWN members might be. Yeah, so um, one of the uh, things we're looking at at the moment is a multi-utility trial using these headsets, um, particularly around remote assistance um, and, and possibly uh, some further applications uh, through the Edge Technologies program. So if you are interested in finding out more about this technology or interested in becoming involved with, uh, with the Edge Technologies trial, um, then get in touch with me. Uh, I'll put my email address in the chat. And... Um, and yeah, um, touch base and we'll, we can go from there. Yeah, great. And suffice to say, I think there's going to be more information on what this trial, what form it's going to look like will come out uh, in the next uh, few weeks as well. I'm just going to circle back to a couple of the questions as well. One of them's on price, uh, always, uh, you know, critical for, you know, any mass rollout of a solution. So, um, Steve, is that something you want to... Yeah, off. sure. I, I can answer that. Um, it, it, you know, that price is slightly variable. The US dollar price on the device is about $2,200 US for the, the device we've demonstrated today. The intrinsically safe device, uh, if you need it, is about $5,500 US dollars. Uh, you know, when, once we bring it into Australia and, and sell it through the channel, it, you're looking at about 3100 Aussie uh, you know, if you include a few accessories for the device uh, uh, plus GST. So that's the, the current price for the device. Yeah, gotcha. What are the lead times out of curiosity, Steve, on that at the moment? Uh, that we're well stocked in Australia at the moment, so you can expect to get devices in under five days anywhere in Australia. Yeah, sure. I'll read out a couple more questions. Suffice to say, feel free to jump on and um, have a look as, as they're flowing through. Uh, one of the questions is on fatigue control while driving. Is there any way yeah, to... I'll yeah. answer that one. Um, so some businesses would choose not to have the HMT worn while driving, which is probably reasonable. Um, others are doing it in controlled environments, which is also an interesting use case about getting first person perspective of the driver. Um, the HMT can be used to to look at the sensor data from fatigue monitoring equipment like a seeing machines, um, sensor or smart cap technologies, fatigue management bands. So those types of things you could use to visualize that data. So the Bluetooth data would be, uh, or Wi-Fi data would be able to be visualized by a supervisor. So if you have a distributed workforce, uh, lone workers that are out and you're wanting to understand their fatigue, you could visualize that sensor data in the HMT when you're also out in the field with a bunch of different workers. So absolutely possible to do. Um, fatigue management is an option, but the actual device itself isn't looking at their eyes or isn't looking at EEG um, data. So um, yeah, you could, you could put it in an ecosystem to help manage fatigue for sure. Great, thanks Gam. Uh, we had a question on there uh, from Charles from Yarra, Yarra Valley Water on the gyro, which I think Brock's answered. 
Uh, so that's taking care of that one. Um, I like the drone question. I have the seen a demonstration. A drone one. Yeah, what's the, what's the response there? Well, I just saw one of our partners has linked a drone with the device and then shared the feed on Teams so that they could see the feed from the device of the drone up above and then they can share that feed with people dialing in to the device as well. So really powerful solution when you've got a, a camera sitting 50 metres off the ground in the area you, you're operating in. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Um, the questions seem to be sort of drying up. Is there any more? I guess at this stage, we've got a couple of minutes to go before we call time, but um, any more for any more with questions? Just showing at the moment, I'm currently um, in, a, in a meeting with myself. <laughs> so this is um, what you would see when you're in uh, the Teams meeting. If you were to turn your video off, you'll be able to then see uh, the other user's screen. So you turn video off. Turn video off. And uh, if I was sharing my camera, which I'm currently using in Zoom, as I said, many working parts, I'd be able to see myself or um, whatever screen I was sharing. And there's, there's just a, an offer of um, connecting across the pond um, or across the desert. Tim Kirkwood from the Water Corp in WA's uh, using realware at the moment and has popped his email in there to see if anyone wants to reach out to share learnings. Um, it's great to see that we're out there trialing this. It's got huge application in the water sector. And on behalf of IWN, I'd like to thank Steve and Cam and also Brock uh, for their time today in putting this together. And from an IWN perspective, there'll be more details coming out, out around what the upcoming trial is going to look like uh, for IWN members. And we'll get some information out to you all on what that is. So once again, uh, from ourselves, thanks very much for your time today. Uh, the video will be posted later today slash early tomorrow morning for those that have missed out. Um, but uh, yeah, I'll just I'll probably hand over to you, Brock, for any closing comments and Steve and Cam. Yeah. Um I'd just like to thank everyone uh, for attending. Uh, this has been a lot of fun. Any excuse I ever have to talk about this fun technology, VR, AR, anything in between, um, it's, I'm still pinching myself that I get to do this uh, on a day to day. So thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to, uh, to show all this off to everyone. And um, if, anyone, if anyone has any questions or just wants to talk tech, um, sing out. Uh, I'd just like to thank, on behalf of Rearware, thank you for the opportunity to present to this uh, group of, uh, of people. So thank you, IWN. Wonderful. Well, thanks, Steve. Thanks, Brock. Thanks, Cam. Thank you. Good on you. Have a great day, everyone. Cheers. <laughs>